Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Bighorn number 70145 door lock installation kit. Okay, so this is a lock installation kit. That's what this video is about. Um, there have been lots of people in the world who have made these. Going back many years, Schlage had many components that would do this work. Westlock was a name back in the early 90s. We sold, it seems like we sold a kit every week. Quickset seems like we sold a kit every week in 2020. Actually, in 2019, they discontinued the Quickset 138. Um, I don't know when the Westlock kit was discontinued. It's been some time. Um, Classic Engineering made a very good quality kit. In 2019, they also discontinued um, manufacturing it. What I was told by the representative of ownership that, listen, we're just not willing to make the material inferior and overseas, and we can't charge what we need to charge to make a very high quality product. Uh, we do have some quick set 138. This is February of 2020. We currently have some 138s. Those will be gone in no time and many piece parts. Now, best lock has one in their catalog, and I've ordered one, and I've not heard whether or not it's still available. I certainly hope that it is. The point of the matter is someone is making that for best. I'm just not sure who, so we'll see what happens. Um, now, admittedly, I'm not a fan of lock installation kits. Now, admittedly, I hold a minority position regarding that opinion. Uh, I am. I have had this conversation with locksmiths and handyman handymen and, and people who do odd jobs for people like installing locks and they look at me like I'm just bizarre and my attitude always has been with these is they're just too much work to set up on the door they're just you know because I I have and, and by the way I've machined tens of thousands of doors myself uh, so I, I, I know um, what it takes how to do it by hand what it takes to do it with substantial sophisticated, reasonably sophisticated machinery. And doing it by hand, for me, was always having just an angle um, locator that will give me the center of my inch and three quarter do thick door or inch and three eighths. My two and three eighths or two and three quarter back set, a very small uh, piece of aluminum. In fact, that I'd always used one by Quickset. They discontinued it. Um, I still have mine. I probably have five. And then it would be a, um, you know, a pencil mark on the edge of the door. And then on the face of my door, I'd turn my unit over. My, uh, and I would mark the other side of the door. And it had a compensating bevel so that I was getting the proper back set on both sides. Realizing that it's just a thin piece of angled um, material. And because back set is... Um, a dimension from the edge of the door to the center of the hole. You have to be mindful if you're dealing with a beveled edge door or a square edge door. If I measure from here to the center of my hole or from down here versus here, I'm going to get a different dimension. And what's nice about that tool that I would use is obviously it's L-shaped and it would rest on the high side of the door, okay? And it's compensated so that I'm going to get an accurate back set um, is what it is. Actually, I modified the tool to be sure I improved it in my opinion to make sure this cheap little ten dollar angle back set finder is going to give me the right size so I'd have that tool and I would mark my holes and then I've got just a two and an eighth inch Morse bimetal hole saw bit with a typical arbor and I'm off to the races mark my holes drill my cross bore halfway through come to the other side and drill obviously it's a hole saw so I have to dig my core out I've already marked the edge of the door now I'm going to use a spade fly butterfly paddle bit whatever you call it wham now i'm down there um my porter cable uh, clamp on template my three-quarter horse router my corner chisel i'm finished so my opinion is that i do that all much faster than the setup time of the T-handle, then the wing nut, and then the T-handle, then back it off, and then the wing nut. Um, but people have looked at me and said, how do you drill it without a temp, without a lock installation kit? And I say, well, I go through it, and they say, oh, that's too much work. I say, okay. Um, but we, you know, 
people love lock installation kits. Uh, I've been told by people that they're, again, indispensable tools. Locksmiths, people who do odd jobs, again, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It is quite unfortunate that those kits are no longer available by most people. I don't know the history of Bighorn. I don't know anything about them. Um, I have looked at the kit. It seems of reasonable quality. It is not near the sort of industrial quality of a classic engineering kit. It's also half the price. So be mindful of that. I think this kit would be a great option um, when... <laughs> When there are no other options, it's a great option. No other people make the kits. Uh, number two, if you have a very adult use and you have maybe moderate to, to low use, I think this kit will probably work out pretty well. Now, what we'll do is uh, let's do a review of what's in the box. Okay. So we've got the kit here. It weighs about 12 and a quarter pound uh, with its case. Uh, a reasonable plastic case. Uh, it doesn't strike me as exceptionally durable. It doesn't strike me as any better or worse than the Kwikset or Westlaw cases. A couple of snap handles here. I'm going to hold this up so we can take a look at it. You want to be mindful of it. Those parts will fall out if you tip this over, but of course you wouldn't end up doing that at all. Or if you don't have the the snaps secured, so be mindful. So this kit's going to have uh, a one inch bit, an inch and a half bit, a two and an eighth inch bit, the clamp itself, a, a corner chisel, a strike locator, a quick change bit, a reducer bushing. It's going to have four plastic templates and three locators, along with an Allen wrench. Okay, so let's go through this. And there are installation instructions uh, linked to down below as well. We're just going to do a visual tour of the entire kit first. And what's nice about the installation instructions, which are included, okay, they give you an overview of the main apparatus, the main clamping fixture, okay. They don't really give you a direct review of everything in the box, unfortunately. That would be nice. Maybe they do in the product brochure. Let's take a closer look. So, on your primary clamp, you're going to have your T-handle. And it's important to understand what they call this material. This is your T-handle, and this is what will open and close the unit down onto the edge of the door. Okay. Your crossbore, your, forgive me, your drill bit will go in here for your crossbore. Your, your edge bore will go, obviously, through this bushing. And they indicate these bushings are replaceable. I'm going to see if we can get a part number for that as well. Okay, These are your back plate. Uh, your, your, forgive me, your back plate and your back plate screws. These are set in position for 2 and 3 eighths. If you're doing 2 and 3 quarter, you're going to remove these screws so that the unit will fit deeper down onto the edge of the door okay this is what's called the center section storage holes for back set screws they have those here they should and I'm going to remove one and demonstrate I'll be able to take that and thread it right into the side no problem at all that's nice now they have this thumb nut uh, here for this wing nut, thumb, screw, and wing nut. That's going to be part of uh, tailoring the installation of the unit on the door. We'll go over that. Your uh, lead screw is this connected to your handle. And those are just, you know, left hand thread, right hand thread sort of scenario. This is called your top plate. Now, what is, what else is in here to go over? Just milled aluminum material. Seems like it's of decent quality. There's no question. That reducer ring, that's going to allow you to fit inside of here. Okay. Goes on one way correctly, one way incorrectly. 
it's grooved. You might be able to tell there's a little bit of a groove here. Well, that is also grooved so that it will fit into the tool. Obviously incorrect, it doesn't go all the way in. Obviously correct, it goes all, it, it basically becomes flush. That will allow you to do an inch and a half hole. So this will do two and three eighths, this will do two and three quarter, this will do inch and a half and two and an eighth. The only thing it doesn't do is five inch, okay? Five inch is a uh, relatively common back set when you're dealing with commercial doors. Obviously in hospitals, you'll see five inch all the time. You can see unusual back sets in locks in homes built in the 1950s and 60s when it was quite in vogue to have locks quite far back from the edge of the door, six inch, uh, uh, 12 inch, even in the center of the door, 18 inch, things of that nature. But this does everything but five inch. Inch and a half hole would be a great hole to use for deadbolts. Uh, Schlage primarily is an inch and a half hole sort of platform capable in in all of their residential locks, their commercial line, I don't think you can put a B660 into a uh, to, uh, into an inch and a half hole, but their old B100, their B400, the beloved B400 series, inch and a half hole. Quickset has some stuff that goes into inch and a half holes, is from what I understand. And the Schlage B250 series, the slam lock, that's an inch and a half hole. Go with a smaller hole every time you can. Every, in my opinion, it looks nice around the door. There's less material to remove, which means there's less material gone from the door, uh, helping in that very small way preserve the integrity of the door. Uh, one really cool thing about this kit is you get a corner chisel. You are going to route with your half-inch router, and we will talk about that in a moment. There's a very important feature to the requirement of the diameter of the router bit and the outside diameter of the collet. You're going to square that off into the corner of your prep, right here you'll square it there and you'll give that a couple of good little smacks with your hammer it'll clean out it'll square out the corner you might need to clean it a little bit lift some material out but otherwise it's perfect this is a copy of the porter cable version and other people who make it i've never used this my one porter cable corner chisel i had i've done countless doors with it you know with a tool like this with any tools there's one thing to use it yourself and speaking to the locksmith handyman community there's another thing to be a large contractor and you have company tools and it all goes out to the job that's a different thing uh, in terms of how well it's going to last this is a strike locator this is kind of cool when you drill that just milled aluminum i think when you drill your two and an eighth at your cross bore then your one inch edge bore you close the door sneak that through your hole i think you'll need a two and an eighth inch hole to get that well actually no you wouldn't um, you would sneak that through your hole and then push and you'll mark the location for your strike, strike locator. Um, if you've got a smaller hole, you can open the door, push this in, then mark your hole, obviously. They have this quick change apparatus that's here. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with any sort of power tools, you'd be familiar with a quick change. Uh, this is going to take the shank of the two and an eighth multi spur bit. And that's, this is this is probably why I don't like these kits, and I'll explain why. It's going to fit in there super nice. Locks in really smooth. I'm not familiar with the long-term integrity of this, how well this is going to work over time. Um, you know, I'd love to hear your feedback. A inch and a half multi-spur bit. Now, what's interesting here is they have, um, you know, I'm really tempted to call this a Forstner bit. Uh, in the sense that it has this one long cutter. It's not a Forstner because it doesn't have a circular perimeter cutter, but this is what they intend for you to use when drilling the edge of the door, and, uh, and that's what it looks like. Okay, You're going to need, you know, and that is a one inch. Yeah, indeed, that's a one inch bit. Um, one inch is going to work for all your locks. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a 15 16 and a 7 8 option as well. Classic Engineering offered that. We might even still have some of those around. But that's what um, that's what's going to drill through the edge of the door. I don't like one inch as the only answer because the width of my latch is one inch. I don't want to see any little creeping, curved, drilled material. But you need the quick change because you are going to be going to two different bits, guaranteed every time, right? So you'll need that. Um, now... 
we have our three locator pieces, and we're going to talk about what these are used for. Uh, these are important. Deadbolt, two and three quarter, inch and an eighth. Uh, inch and an eighth wide, two and a quarter. One inch wide, two and a quarter. You're going to need those. I'm going to snap them back in place because I want them to be where they belong. Then you're going to have your nail-on templates. This is clearly going to be for a strike, two and three quarter strike template. Okay, not sure what species of lumber this is, but it's it's a hardwood species, alder, beech, you know, something durable like that. Two and three quarter T strike. They're going to give you. You're going to have your ability to get your uh, latch prep done on the door. Okay, that'll allow you to uh, to definitely make a go of that. That will be, um, I think that's for your one inch wide version. Yeah, it has to be. Let's take a look. Yeah, indeed. You're gonna have a full lip uh, strike. This would be a full lip would be a two and a quarter tall D strike or a full lip strike. That's gonna be your inch and an eighth wide. This should be an inch and a quarter wide. Yep, spot on. Okay. So these templates, and, and obviously what you do is you're gonna you're going to butt you're gonna get that on the edge of the door and you're gonna nail it down. So these are these work fine. I, I don't have any trouble with them at all. Um, and I'm not dissuading you from using this kit or doing it my way or any way in particular. I always use the Porter Cable. Um, is it a 517? There are three primary. Well, there's more than three. There's probably six or eight. Uh, a Porter Cable 517 is there template. Now keep in mind the 517 template alone is almost the cost of this entire kit, but it will allow you to adjust from a very small to a larger prep. You know, maybe, I don't recall the maximum length and width, but you will, you know, I would take my 517 and if you look that up, you'll see what I'm talking about. I would score my center line and I would keep the template set to what I wanted to prep, whether it be a flush bolt or a edge or a 161 prep. And I would get that and tighten that down once I center my, uh, get, strike my center line on the edge of the door, drop my router into that, and I'm done in seconds. It's just really great. The 517 is the template that I use for that. They have a, um, anyway, this isn't a conversation about Porter Cable at all, but, um, you know, that, 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 that tooling from Porter Cable is quite an investment. This is, you know, this is not that level of investment requirement. Um, so we've gone over the contents of the box. What I need to hear from you is, how well does it work? How does it work the first time? How does it work the hundredth time? I'm very curious to know, does the quick change bit work? After you've cracked that corner chisel 400 times, how does it work? Do the bits stay sharp? Uh, do they score the inside of the business end of this unit when you're running it through you know do you have any trouble with any of that oh by the way that set screw will hold your bushing on you'll want that bushing to be secured in uh, should need arise for that uh, meaning drilling a two and an eighth inch hole uh, inch and a half hole now why don't I like this well I was probably about 14 years old and I was on a side job with my dad five generation family affair we are distributing commercial building products my dad went to a client's house uh, to do to install a deadbolt and took the tools, the whole nine yards, a Luan door back when Luan was, you know, readily available at every lumber yard uh, in terms of a veneer for a door. And he hit that door with the spur bit and these aggressive outside cutters just ripped that open cell wood and split, sheared, it didn't shear, but it flared out the veneer horribly um, the day was you know 
the client couldn't have been more gracious. All we did was add some scar plates, some Donjo scar plates, and it was it was fine. But I do not like um, these aggressive outside cutters. When you use a bimetal hole saw, you have tiny little, tiny little teeth. You can't really rip that veneer. And plus, when you get that going, you go nice and slow so that you're really scoring the door first. My opinion on the multi spurbit again, is the minority position. The same crowd that I talk to say, I've never had such a problem with these. Never had it. And obviously that door that my dad drilled into was incredibly dry. Uh, it was the middle of winter, so there was no moisture. It was brittle, if anything. Um, but I've been, I've never had luck with these. And I, the idea of tearing someone's veneer is, doesn't sit well with me. So I, uh, I really never gravitated towards it. I, I think what happened was I felt horrible for my dad because he made a mistake that someone of his experience, you know, wouldn't make. So he, I felt awful for him because he didn't make that kind of mistake. But it happened to him that day. And I think the bit that he had was self-feeding. So he, he got it going, and he, uh, this isn't a self-feeding bit. It just has a diamond point to it so that it's centering but doesn't self-feed. And that self-feeder, and he gave it a little too much RPM on the drill, and it just, what happens when they're self-feeding is they really aggressively, quickly, if you're not used to it, hit the door in a short amount of time or hit whatever you're drilling in a short amount of time. The self-feeding is nice because it kind of gets the whole job started for you, but if you're not expecting it, then it's a surprise. And I, I think that was part of the case as well. Um, anyway, let's switch to the screen view where we can take a look at that installation instruction in detail. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at, and we're going to talk about the link to the manufacturer's page here, but here's what we're dealing with first. This is their part number, BJ115C3, Templaco. That Templaco is a name that I have not heard for a long time. Um, they did have a line of, and by the way, this is that 517 that I'm talking about. I think we have it in our site. We don't. Uh, doesn't matter. Okay, it's going to look like that. But again, be mindful. This thing is almost the cost of an entire kit. I use the daylights out of these. I, 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 I own multiple of those at a single time. The lock mortiser is another primary tool that I use. If you're going to buy one of these, buy an old one that's used. I've had horrible luck with the generations that are, you know, in, that are made since about 2000. They just don't last like the old war horses do. The hinge butt template kit, that is an absolute standby. I would do one setup for 6.8 and one setup for 7.0, but I literally welded my kit together because I don't ever want to be concerned about it being off. I literally welded it together because I would do one particular location for those. And it, 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 it did become necessary occasionally to do a one-off, uh, but I would have the fourth. I would, I would only weld three of them together. And then I would manually use the fourth as a standalone product if necessary. Anyway, back to the uh, Templaco. That's what I wanted to look up. Um, not real familiar with them as a company, but I know what they do or did was basically make composite sort of nail-on kits is what they were. Okay. Not a lot of experience with these, but with this company, but nonetheless. Okay, so back to what we're working on. This kit, as you can see below, this kit is supplied with the door boring fixture that's adjustable via those two set screws. Uh, one inch to two and a half inch thick doors. That's awfully nice because inch and three eighths. Inch and three quarter, two and a quarter. You're going to handle all of that out of the box. You're going to get three carbide bits, one inch, 
uh, inch and a half, two and an eighth, quick release, latch and strike templates for a finish mortise. Those are those individual part numbers. Three center locators also included along with a center marker. A center marker. Mm, it must they must be referring to the locator itself. Comes in a nice blow molded case. Sure, it's nice. Uh, Prop 65, I think that has to do with harmful chemicals inside. Anyway, let's tackle the manual first, then we'll hit the product brochure. So the manual, go right to the back page of it, gives us an overview of the business end of the tool. And you can review that. We went through it in the first section of this video. Now, here's something incredibly important. Obviously, you're going to need more tools to make this work like a drill bit, probably an extension cord, like a tape measure. You're going to need a router and a router bit and a collet. So if you're new to this, don't stress over that. But you need to have a collet is not the proper term. Yeah, okay, so this is this is what I'm thinking of. Template guide set. So they call it a template guide. Um, you need to have the right template guide on your tool, on your router. Okay. So what they're saying here is you this is not optional. You must use a half inch diameter router bit, and then a I call it a collet, it's called a template guide that has a five eighths outside diameter. The reason for that is because the, the the template, the nail on templates, as I demonstrated earlier, and I said the one that's inch and an eighth, that would measure inch and a quarter, that's taking into account the fact that the template guide needs that extra sixteenth on each end. Uh, it's literally designed for that. If you were to change your template guide size, you would then need to change the size of the inside of this. So these nail on templates are made based on the very fact that you are going to be using a half a 5 8 outside diameter template guide. I shouldn't call it a collet. The collet is the tooling that the bit goes into. Keep this uh, keep the boring bits sharp. Don't push harder to make the bit dull. Don't do that. Uh, that will cause wear on the bushings as well and cause bits to break. Let the bit do the job. Slow but steady but moderate pressure. Let the teeth do the job. Um, and you know if you push it hard you can ruin it on the on the on the second door that you drill use the quick release absolutely use the quick release because you can replace the quick release easier than you can replace the shanks on these bits do not chuck them directly into a slow drill motor never use them in a drill press that's for sure that will not that that's unnecessary wear on the tooling a drop or two of light oil on the bushings is always a good idea uh, and will certainly extend the life a small amount. You don't want any of it to get on your door at all, especially if it's a veneer uh, that will have a chemical reaction to water. Um, oak will, there is a chemical process reaction that happens when water hits oak. It will destroy the veneer and you cannot mitigate that problem. You might bleach the entire door uh, using a proper sort of process to basically blend in, make the entire door look like that. Uh, but don't uh, don't let any any more any lubricant get on your door. Let's jump up. So we just covered page four. Let's go to the first page. It's just the cover manual. And now all they're going to talk about is how to get the jig on the door. Turn the thumb screw counterclockwise, and that is going to allow you to, you know, open up the thumb screw. All right. And, and I think this entire paragraph is why I'm not in love with these tools. It's like all this back and forth and back and forth. Turn the thumb screw counterclockwise, loosen the wing nut, okay, to position the jig as per your requirements. Insert both bits into the jig. Okay, so, so the first thing here is there's no indication on the on the on the jig itself there's no indication here of center line i don't know what my center is it would be nice that if this if the milled aluminum had a 
milled engraved, um, if it had a milled uh, feature to it on one side that showed me what my center line was. I don't see that on here at all. So if I want to measure 36 inch, not that I would, but if I were to measure 36 inch from the bottom of my door to my center line, I want to be able to quickly find that on the tool. Um, now what you could do is, um, you know, use, I suppose, the you, you're not going to be able to. You'll need a way to find center on this. That You're going to need to come up with a way. I would mark it on the edge of the tool myself. Uh, and on the very edge of the tool, what I mean is, I would mark not only the face of this plate, but I would mark this edge so I could see my center line. Okay. Insert. So loosen, loosen the thumb screw and the wing nut. Insert both of the bits into the jig. Then get the entire apparatus onto the door. You're going to tighten the T-handle until both jaws... Uh, sorry. You're going to tighten the T-handle until both jaws of the jig meet the door. Then back off the T-handle one, uh, one revolution. Screw in the thumb screw until it stops turning. Then tighten the wing nut. Start tightening the T-handle slowly and firmly, but don't over-tighten it. I've had a client about three, four months ago with a classic engineering kit. And just to give you a point of reference on classic engineering... Okay. Um, he over cranked over the years the T handle and stripped one of the plates. And while the parts were simple and straightforward to understand, it was sourcing them that was the problem. I the client called back and was unable to repair it, which made sense. Um, and I actually had a used tool here that I sold him the use tool and he was able to happily continue on with his work um so don't the, the point of saying don't over tighten the tool is because you're going to damage it make sure both jaws of the jig are parallel and gripping the surface of the door if you see the jaws are not parallel with the surface of the door start loosening the t-handle and adjust the thumb screw to attain the proper alignment admittedly with experience and practice you're going to get pretty good at that now, another thing that no installation instructions are going to tell you, but I have very routinely taken my aluminum tools or my fixtures, and I have, with a very, very, very fine sandpaper, sanded the edge of this material because as you clamp down onto the door, you're going to leave an impression. You may not be able to see it with your eye, but unfortunately there are times when it will be revealed when you put a finish on it, even a paint um, so you'll, you want to be mindful that this entire inside edge you might want to dress and you might want to test that before you start using it in a production setting um, if it's leaving any sort of, um, I mean, it's quite smooth and clean, but I would, I would be very mindful of being sure that I wasn't going to leave any impressions or bite marks, so to speak, on the face of the door before I just started having at it. Um, and once you're satisfied, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the jig can be used for two and three quarter and two and three eighths. Those are those screws that we demonstrated earlier. Remove them for two and three quarter. It's that simple. Lock and latch hole. You're first gonna drill your two and one eighth. That's just a typo. You're gonna drill your two and an eighth inch bit first. Start drilling through the door, cross bore. Stop drilling once you achieve the bore and remove the adapter from the bit by sliding back the chrome part of the adapter. Okay, so stop drilling once you achieve the bore and remove the adapter from the bit. This is the adapter. Once you're drilled, remove the adapter. I would probably, I, I guess what they're saying is remove the bit from the door. I'm really, really nervous about using a multi-spur bit in the first place, much, much less drilling all the way through a door but the fact of the matter is you are going to have the receiving end of the tool to receive that bit and that's that large that that, that uh, two and an eighth inch prep that's in the in the door so you're going to be clamped on the door and your bits going to be drilling through the door to that large 
You can't see it here, but on the other plate, there's that large receiving hole. Uh, stop drilling once you achieve the bore. Remove the uh, release, the quick release. Uh, and I would remove the bit, obviously, from the door. Now put it onto your one inch. Drill that. that that'll be easy. Don't, don't be tempted to drill that quickly. Let the bit do its work. You'll hit the pocket, or the cross bore, I should say, and you'll be done. Pulling it back to remove the sawdust. Absolutely, these aren't fluted bits per se, although they kind of are. But you're going to have a you're going to have a lot of mess uh, on your hands with this. One thing that I do um, if I'm on a job or if it's a mineral corridor, and of course you wouldn't be using this to drill a mineral corridor unless you were authorized as a licensed machiner to do so. But I would have a shop vac uh, and another person collecting as much of that as I was creating it. You know, there's just no reason to sweep it off the ground. It'll be the particulate will hang in the air, it will show up everywhere else in your lungs. Let the shop vac and the assistant capture that sawdust as you're creating it. So now the final page here is the lock face mortising and the jam mortising if you need to. If you may be doing hollow metal uh, frames with wood doors. Select the right size of center locator, and there are three of them for the latch size you are installing, fit into the one inch hole that is already drilled at the edge of the door. Figure four. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, place the latch template over the center selector. Align the template. Adjust the red edge stop on the back side of the template so it can touch the edge of the door and hold the template with alignment. Hammer the nails to the door. Now take away the center locator. Okay. So the center locator does the job of finding center. If you were to take your, your uh, latch template and actually mark that for center, um, I suppose you could certainly get around the center locator, but it wouldn't be as accurate as using the center locator as a way to temporarily position the uh, template until you nail it. And once you adjust the red screws on the back of this that I had kind of shown earlier, there's a red uh, marker and then two screws that will allow you to um, very accurately repeat that process over and over. Now, the reason to adjust it also is because, believe it or not, all inch and three quarter doors are not 1.75. You can have 1.71, 1.73, 1.695. If you're doing a, a door that has plastic laminate, now you're probably dealing with 1.8125. So that center locator doesn't care about the thickness of the door. It's locating the center. And that's achieved by, of course, the left and right threads from the T-handle operation. So it's hard to beat the logic of using that, even though it's going to take more time. But you will know immediately if the alignment tabs on the back side of this are in the right position. Okay, Hammer it on. Complete your mortise with your router. Now, what you want to do is promise yourself that you're not going to remove the tool from the template until the router has completely stopped turning. Sooner or later, you're going to pull it out and you're going to nick the template. If you nick the template, it's done. There's no reasonable way to repair that. You'll need a new one. I did it one time, and I religiously, over years, did not remove that tool until the, uh, until the bit was completely finished moving. Um, and, and of course, you know what I nicked was my my 517, my my template that cost a fortune. I nicked the side of this. No way to repair that. Um, strike plate installation. Once the door is hung on the jam, place the center marker as shown right here in Figure Six. Close the door. Stick your finger in there and mark it. Now, you're really in good shape. The mark is the starting point for the one-inch hole that will be drilled on the face of the jam. Start drilling a one-inch hole into the jam about three-quarter inch deep. Then put your center locator. Then put your template over the center locator. Make sure your adjustable tabs on the back are in place. Nail the template onto the jam. And then route is what this is going to say. Select the correct center locator. Place it into the one inch hole you just made, install the correct template over the center locator, adjust it for the right back space until the adjusting 
uh, uh, using the plastic stops located on the back side of the template. Fasten the template to the jam using the nails. Take away the center locator and use your router to complete the installation. So really a simple and straightforward process for doing this. And again, you know, the handyman, the locksmith, they enjoy the step by step by step by step by step. And the reason they enjoy that is, I wouldn't say that they enjoy it. That's the wrong term. The reason that they'll look at me and say, how do you prep the door without a kit? Is because these steps will keep you from doing it wrong. And that's why I think people love it. Um, because it, it forces a repeatable pattern every time you prep a door that eliminates the possibility that you're going to screw something up. Um, and that's the beauty of templates like this. So let's close off these installation instructions. Let's hit the product brochure and see what that's all about. Okay, lots of goodness in here. They're going to give you part numbers for the individual components. Wouldn't be unheard of to need to buy a drill fixture. You may have dropped it. It may have come out of the case. The case may not have been snapped closed, and you pulled the handle, and it went tumbling down the concrete. Um, that could be a problem. Replacement templates. Uh, don't nail onto it. Don't remove your router without it being fully stopped, and it will probably last a decent amount of time. And obviously, here are those adjustable locators on the back. Very crucial. 5 8 OD on the template guide. Half inch diameter, two flute carbide router bit is all you need. Center locators. Uh, the strike mortisers, those are nice. That's a metal uh, unit that will have a, uh, sh a sharpenable cutter, replaceable cutter on these. A drill bushing. You know, you drill enough holes, you're going to wear the bushings out, which are here as well. Quick change. Hopefully you don't need one of those too quickly. Uh, corner chisel and center strike locator. Uh, old tip from um, old time carpenters is they would literally put lipstick on the edge of the deadbolt and throw the deadbolt against the jam and therein mark the jam. Okay, Poor man's strike locator. Replacement parts for your templates. You hammer on these enough and you pull them back with your claw hammer, you will eventually bend them. You want to be really careful and slow when you're pulling the nails out, especially if you're dealing with a maple where you really got to crack on the hammer good to get it in there in the first place. That'll really wear it down. Replacement locator stops. A replacement case, sure, it could get damaged, cracked. Better that than the tool itself. A lifter, door lifter, and then a door holder. You're going to machine a door. You're going to want. You're going to want one of these. That's to be sure, because um, it's not fun doing this while the door is laying on, laying flat on sawhorses. Uh, replacement bits. This is what's called a Vix bit. Very, very handy when you are drilling. Um, when you want to pre-drill the hole for uh, hinge screws. Um, a number five VIX bit and a number nine Nix, uh, VIX bit. If you're doing four and a half inch hinges, you'll need a larger VIX bit. But when you're doing residential material, this would probably be very appropriate for you, for your latch screws, for your residential hinges. A template guide set. I don't know what you would use the other sizes for other than the five eighths. Um, it's nice to have. But this would be the only one I think that you're going to require. And that is that covers everything on this kit. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, is it going to be as durable as a kit that's going to cost twice the cost or more? Um, no, probably not. Um, do you really want to spend several hundreds of dollars to do this? Or would you like to just spend a few hundred dollars? Um, yeah, probably. Uh, I would think that if you're going to use this in a very adult, professional fashion, you should get a lot of mileage out of this kit. Um, but I've never used it. I've never used the bits. I've never used the uh, nail-on templates. I've never used the quick change and the corner chisel. So I don't know how durable they're going to be. I would. It's my impression that they will be reasonably good. Um, if you're going to launch into it, this is actually going to a school district 
and I'm going to set a reminder for six months and reach out to the client and ask, how did it go? How many doors have you done? Did it work well? Because uh, I don't know who Bighorn is at all. Um, for all I know, it could be somebody that I didn't know that I knew. Um, and that Allen wrench obviously is going to help you with the setting of the, the um, drill fixture itself. Um, there are certain areas on here. There's a set screw for your bushing, obviously. Uh, for, for your drill guide bushing, for then for your other two bushings, that set screw is going to be way down in there for this bushing. Bushings are, are pretty normal to, to sell. Um, you know, I used to really make an effort to not wear out the bushings on anything, but eventually they, they will get a little large and it's time to replace them because your bit's moving a little bit, I suppose. So feedback, I would love to hear your feedback on this kit, and I will uh, add more to the extended description of this uh, item when it becomes available. Now, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page uh, that I had mentioned earlier that's going to have a link to not only all of the Bighorn products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Um, so interesting. Now, when you go to the... Bighorn site, there's a lot more than just this type of tool that's there. Lots of brands. I think the deal is Bighorn might be a conglomerate and own other divisions of woodworking tools. Uh, so you might want to take a take a dive into that and see if that's of, of any interest to you. Any questions on the Bighorn? 70145 door lock installation kit. So you notice what I just did, doesn't close. These need to be pointed down. The templates will only go in one way and still per permit the kit to close. Let's study this to make sure that we get it correct. That is not correct. Uh -huh. There we go. So, what I dem what I what I wanted to be sure there is the templates. You're going to alternate nails down, nails up, nails down, nails up, and when you have that stapled on uh, uh, applied material to the face of the template that hangs off the template, there is a molded recessed area that it needs to fit down into. Okay. Once you have that marked, <laughs> A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, maybe. Um, you know, keep it simple. Allow yourself to be lazy. Um, and that's what this kit does with that uh, ritualized uh, pattern uh, to go about and uh, prepping the door is, is, I think, why people like it. Any questions on this or any other Bighorn product, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.